Forster, SCS Honcho. I'm going to do turn two now of a replay of a Cambian game of Day of Days that I'm playing with Jim Pyle. We will start, if we look at the sequence of play for turn two, it's a landing wave turn, and there will be no airdrops or preliminary bombardment. We're going to have the Allied landings, German barrage, then the Allied movement, Allied barrage, and during this phase, only the destroyers can fire from the naval units, so there shouldn't be a whole lot of Allied barrage going on. No air at this phase, and then Allied combat. Let's begin with the landings. So we have more folks landing at Utah. As I mentioned in the last replay, you have a 50-50 chance at the beginning of the game of just determining where the Americans will land. Will they land here at the planned beaches or where they actually drifted to, which was a better place to land, better for the Americans that they did that. They took a lot fewer casualties than they would have otherwise. Next, we move on on turn two to uh, point to Hawk to see what happens with this German garrison. It, the artillery actually wasn't there. Now we have it set up and now it's sort of a random chance. Is there anything here at the beginning or not? So Jim will roll for those units and it's gonna turn out that they actually weren't there at all. So the Rangers will land unopposed. Not so good for me, but it's a small thing. We now have more Americans piling up on Omaha. And as you can see, at least on turn two, it's he's got a lot more strength up here, and this is usually the more common area you'll see a breakthrough right over here. And Jim's done very well. On turn one, he removed three of my strong points. One there, one here, and one here, right at the exit points at the draws. So the Americans at Omaha are off to a great start. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes they get hung up there and don't take out any of the strong points the first turn via bombardments or attacks. Then they have kind of a long day trying to get off the beaches there. They always do get off the beach, but the question is how long does it take and how many casualties do they take getting there? The Commonwealth continues to land. Unfortunately, I don't have many units to oppose them there, which means I won't have many spotters for artillery barrages this turn. Although I should still have enough spotters to use all of my artillery. It doesn't happen too often. It's, it's, we can call this, for the Germans, a target-rich environment. It's just a question of whether you get to shoot at who you want to shoot at or not. And it soared the last landings. You can see how piled up this is. There's so much stuff coming in. It's so congested. And this is why the Germans want to plug this up as long as possible, because you can do a lot of damage to the Commonwealth units with barrages. So I'm not going to start a log. Let's load the next continuation. The Allies have landed, so now we're going to do the German barrage phase here. Yes, I'm sure I want to do that. So let's go back. We've been starting sort of a left to right. So I'm going to scroll all the way back to Utah. And first, if I recall, I'll be placing the markers. Hmm. All right, we're jumping all over the place here. All right, so here's some stuff that's going on to the beach at Utah. And I can spot within four of a unit if they're still on a beach. So I cannot spot these guys and I cannot fire at them. And there's a slight positive modifier for shooting at the beach anyway, so we'll want to do that. I'm placing more markers down, then we're moving over here to Utah. Uh, sorry, to Omaha. And I'm looking for big targets, but often uh, units have to fire adjacent if there's an enemy adjacent, so I don't have a whole lot of choice, but I'll pick the big stacks and try to do some damage where I think it's going to count. You see I'm focusing on the units that are threatening to break through the draw there. No big surprise. Nothing that should shock any gamer out there. So I have a spotter here within four, so I'm able to hit those beaches still, but I think this is going to be the last turn. He'll probably clear me out. And I've got this, this unit here, if he doesn't clear that, that has some observation. But once you get past the, these two wave turns, you land and move before the Germans barrage. So it's a completely different animal in terms of what the Germans can do. This way, if the Allies, you really have to plug them up totally so they can't move off the beach with a new normal movement phase to get those bombardments in the beach. But here, I'm limited to three markers per hex. That's the maximum artillery barrage markers you can place. I think that's about all I have anyway, but. All right, so I'm starting to roll for my damage. I'm just gonna blow through this and then we'll talk about it at the end. Doing some damage. Jim's gonna have some corrections for me and not all of them were correct, but I'm not gonna worry about it. 
I'm, if you might be getting the sense of, as a player, I'm not as detail oriented as others in a game of this scale, a step here or there, I'm not going to care about. So as you, hmm, I missed the DG roll here for the new stuff, the, the guys that landed there previously are DG, but these new ones are not. And that's too bad. That artillery unit didn't get DG'd, so. So doing some damage, uh, and I'm just as we put it, the yellow artillery, of course, does more damage than the other ones. All right, so that's down at sword. Should probably DG that stuff. The DG is not going to recover for them until turn three. Yeah. It's pretty hard to miss <laughs> stacks that big, I got to say. <laughs> Although occasionally with some bad dice, if you whiff all of it, it could be bad. So uh, did some damage. Um, but of course, there are simply too many allies to really stop. Now, we're going to have to blow through this. Let's see. I'm going to load a continuation, not begin a new log file. And this is going to be right. We're going to be going through some of the same stuff again. And I'm just going to do this very quickly until we get to the new stuff. So Jim, we were kind of negotiating about whether my artillery was too far away, whether it was allowed to fire, and then also loss allocation. I was taking losses for Jim and Jim wanted to take them a little differently. We sort of differ. He likes to take mortars when he can. He's not a real fan of mortars. I, as the Allies, love mortars. So um, I tried, as the Germans, to eliminate them whenever possible because I think once down the road, when you're in the bocage, those mortars come in really, really handy. But, you know, everyone has their own style of play. So we're at modifying, etc. Going through the log again. I'll see how fast I can click. and see when Jim starts moving again. Because after my barrage is, okay, now we're onto his movement. So after my barrage is allied movement, and let's see where we are. Looks like he's coming down, looks like he started here at sword, right. So he's moving a hex, that's all you get to move, but the DG guys can move, so he should be spreading out as much as he can, but not everyone's gonna be able to get off those beaches. So that's gonna give me a chance during barrage, again, of turn three, hopefully, well, we'll see. So he's advancing this way, and the blob, the allied blob, continues to envelop, envelop my poor German defenders. And you do get a sense playing this of how <laughs> what a hopeless task it was. You know, there was some discussion of the landings failing, but if you look at all the stuff that's out here, it's hard to imagine it really failing. And of course, at the naval support was tremendously key. Okay, and then we're over here, and he's advancing off the beaches at Utah as well. Yeah, I'd like to center it on what's happening so you can see that. Here we go. Creeping off the beaches, and you can see there's a huge hole in my line, a very important trail road th thing through here. This one's important, too. He's going to want to clear as much as he can to get some flexibility to get in through there. Those are the two exit points. Now, uh, we're ready for the Allied Barrage. When we look at the sequence of play for these turns, German Barrage we did, just did Allied Movement, and now we're on to the Allied Barrage. So he's going to place his markers. And in terms of the naval stuff, only the destroyers. This is when the destroyers came in in the morning and offered close support. So, not too surprisingly, he's trying to clear these guys out as best he can. And he's doing, he's doing a little bit of stuff there. And now, uh, we shouldn't be too shocked either that he's piling up on these points he's trying to break through. You see there, there's not even a, a strong point there anymore. So he's focusing his fire. There is another way of playing that, and that is because you lose some possible damage. If you all get hits, you're wasting them. So another way of playing is really spreading it all throughout and just seeing where the holes pop up naturally by the dice. But Jim has instead decided to focus on these things. And he eliminates them via barrage. Not always easy to do because there is a negative loss modifier if there's just a single unit in the hex. All right, you see him hitting the, the sort of anchor points on the flank, trying to clear those out. Uh, 
Okay, let me flip that. Got one step on him. It's a good idea to get rid of this if at all possible because this offers a lot of observation of the beach area and blocks this road with the zone of control. Good, he didn't take this stack out. Very nice. Something survived. Ugh, Morgan. And down a sword. Good, at least I've got these two guys plugging him up a little bit. He hasn't taken them out yet. It's pretty normal in the course of the game that these units to be surrounded and then out of supply. It's often possible to wait, wait them out as the um, allied player and just let them surrender by being out of supply. Now we do attacks. All right, a 12. That's too bad. Rolling a 12 at 2 to 1. I don't like that, but... You know, what do you do? Let's see what else is up to. Oh, this is, he's doing so well. This could last quite a while otherwise. So he's, I gotta say, okay, there's an A1 flipping the armored unit. I'll take that. Now they go into there. Is he able to eliminate that strong point? No, it looks like not. That's good. Uh, rolling a 10 at 2 to 1. Again, I'm dice or dice. What do you do? Oh, good grief. <laughs> You're kidding. I've lost his whole flank. This is terrible. Oh, he's doing well. I don't want to hear Jim complaining about anything. I actually, I honestly have not seen um, an Allies player here come off the beach as well as he has there. So, and the historical progress at the end of turn four was right there. And this is the end of turn two, and he hasn't even had a real turn. And look at all this junk that's still waiting to, to land on wave three. And then there's the armored reinforcements on turn four. So, and we'll kind of re review the progress that the allies are making. This, to me, looks great. I'm not sure why he has that up there. I think he wants to have a spotter for bombardments or something. But I might just ignore those and flank him if I were him. So, Utah's coming along fine. Omaha is coming great. I don't want to hear. He's probably cackling with glee over there. Uh, and everything else is looking very good. So I think he's off to a great start as the Allies. I'm going to have my work cut out for me as the Germans. Now, is it a big deal, the tempo? Yes and no. Obviously, there's still a lot of game left. It's 22 turns. But if he comes off the beaches really fast, that gives him kind of an extra turn to make some objectives and it just is a matter of applying pressure over time during this game that it when you start taking some casualties and at the end of the game sometimes it really can come down to do you have enough time left with unit activations to apply the pressure you need to get the victory points so jim's doing great we'll do the turn three which is going to be our first full turn replay very soon <laughs>